Okay, this is the fun stuff in chapter seven where we get to use protractors and start constructing triangles. So our target is, we're actually, it kind of has a couple parts. We need to be able to measure and construct with a protractor. So knowing how to use a protractor, measure and construct, that means draw, and I'm gonna say angles, but also triangles with a protractor. And in this section, we're gonna give you the angles. So I'm gonna say angles given, okay? And that's kind of right here in the title too. If you know what the angles are supposed to be, can you construct that triangle, okay? So let's start by looking at our um, protractor. Here's my protractor. It goes from zero all the way up to 90 and then keeps going over to 180 degrees if I make a straight line. Now notice there's two sets of numbers. I could also start over here and use the outside numbers, counting up all the way to 90 and then keep going all the way to 180. So the key here is to make sure you know which set of numbers you're using based on if your angle opens this way, I would use the inside numbers, right? Starting at zero and counting up. Or if my angle opens this way, I would start at the outside numbers at zero and count up as my angle gets bigger. So you'll see how that works when we put it down on the paper. Okay, so you are going to follow along and watch. You might not have a, a protractor at home and that's okay, but here's what we need to be able to do. I put my protractor down and notice, I'm gonna make this a little brighter so you can see. Here is my vertex, the pink dot. That vertex needs to go directly underneath this hole on the protractor. So I line it up as best I can, and then I can see through it, so I see that my line is going right here, lined up with the line on my protractor. So this is pointing at zero, which means I'm starting here, and I'm gonna count up, 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 until I get over here at where my angle is pointing to. So sometimes if you wanna just gently extend this, you can you wanna see where, what number it's pointing at. So I know I went past 90 all the way to 110 degrees. And I just read it off the protractor and then I label it like this. That's 110 degrees. And that seems reasonable because I know it's an obtuse angle, so more than 90. Okay, let's try the next one. Here's my vertex. That needs to go under this hole in your protractor line it up, you can see through it, so I'm lining this up so it's pointing right at zero. Now my angle's opening up this way, so I'm using the outside numbers. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and if I extend this out, it would be pointing pretty much right at 60 degrees. You can also extend it first, sometimes that's a good idea, so that you know you're going straight. And then when you put your protractor down, you'll be able to read it easier. So that's another strategy. Oh yeah, I was gonna say 60, but it looks like more 57, 58. I'm gonna call it 58 degrees. We always label our angles right inside there, like that. That seems reasonable. All right, and then one more. Let's put the protractor down and just make sure it's lined up pointing at zero, which means I'm using the inside numbers and it does go right up to 90, which is what I would expect because I see that that has a right angle. So, number one, you have to have an idea of what number is reasonable. If it's obtuse, you better get something bigger than 90. If it's acute, you need to get something less than 90. If it's right at 90, right, you know that's a reasonable number. So, knowing how to set up and read your protractor is the first thing. Now let's talk about drawing angles, right? Constructing angles of a certain degree measurement. I'm gonna to switch to my erasable pen in case I need them, if I have to erase anything. Okay, we always start with just a line. Use your ruler to make a nice line and then put a vertex on it. Now you put your protractor back down with that vertex under the hole like it's supposed to be and things lined up. So I'm gonna draw it this way pointing to zero over here. And if I wanna get all the way to 150, I'm gonna count up 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Move it down so you can see. 
100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150. And I can see I ran off the edge of my paper, but it would be right here like that. And I make a mark. Then move your protractor and connect your vertex to the mark that you drew. Okay, so this was my angle. 150 degrees would go there like that. You can put arrows if you want, not a big deal. Okay, and that looks reasonable. I could also fill in that this should be 30 degrees because those make a straight line, but they just wanted the 150. Okay, 95 degrees. Again, start with a line, put a vertex on it somewhere, doesn't really matter. Line it back up with the hole over the vertex. Your line's lined up. You get to decide which way you want it to open. I usually just like mine to open to the right. So I'm just going to count up all the way to 95. So here's 95 right there between 90 and 100. Then I move it and use the straight edge, the ruler, to draw in my line. I don't have to go all the way out there. That's just where it was easy to make a dot. Make it as long as you want, and then write in how big it is, 95 degrees. Okay, one more. Okay, so you're just following along on your paper with the steps. Do the best you can. If you have a protractor, cool. If not, listen and follow along and just sketch it on your paper. Okay, make a line. We always start with a line. Vertex. Line it back up. Measure how big your angle should be. Mine's off the paper again, but I can tell it would be right there. And then connect your dots. Now, notice everything I draw is a nice straight line with the protractor. Go ahead and label that as 30 degrees. Don't do any freehand. I mean, right now you are maybe if you're at home without a protractor. But in class, when you have a protractor, you're not going to do anything that's just like this, like sloppy, messy, not straight. You're always going to use a protractor so it's nice and good lines there. Okay, so we are going to put this together now and construct a triangle. Here we go. All right, the numbers you need to fill in, these are angles. So 40 degrees, 50 degrees, and 90 degrees. Okay? And then we'll talk about what these words mean down here. Let's start with a line, like always. Okay, put a vertex on it. Cool, you wanna give yourself enough room. Just follow along at home, even if you don't have a protractor. I'm gonna do the 90. The 90 is probably the easier one to start with, but we could pick any of them. And I'm gonna mark my 90 degrees, and then I'm going to fill that in. Now, label it. I have to turn this into a triangle, which, if you can just picture with me, means we have to connect the sides like that. So I'm going to simply slide over here and draw another vertex. Okay, doesn't matter where I put it. I'm only worried about getting the angles I need in here. Line up my protractor. Now the key is... I can't start over here. I can't have my angle at this zero and going this way because then I'd end up with a line like this and that doesn't make a triangle. I need it to open up this way, right? To actually come over here and hit that line. So I put it back down and it doesn't matter which one you do. Let's do 40. So I'm gonna use the outside numbers now because my angle is opening this way. 20, 30, 40. Make a dot. And then connect that second vertex to the dot you made. Now you should have a triangle. Okay, this one we measured was 40. Let's check that one. Hopefully it ends up being 50 and we're all done. It should, if we did it right. Yep, pointing right at the 50 here. Now notice my, my protractor's turned. You have to pick up your protractor and rotate it around until it's going the right way, where this is lined up pointing to a zero. Okay? So I finish labeling that angle, and I'm all done. Okay? I'm going to erase the extra lines I didn't need, but we're good. Okay, on to the next one. Don't need that either. 35, 35, 1, 10. 
Okay, start with the line. I'm gonna move down a little bit just so I know I have enough room. Doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna get my line on there. I'm gonna put a vertex on it. And I'm gonna start with my big obtuse angle, 110 degrees. So get that lined up, pointing to zero here. I'm gonna come all the way around to 110 here and make a line. That's my 110. Now, don't get confused. I don't actually need this. You can erase it or just ignore it. Okay, I just need the 110 degrees. And now 35 and 35. I'm actually gonna make this a little longer. You can always adjust. Okay, so I'm gonna come out here, put a new vertex, and do 35 degrees from there. So now my protractor gets set down on top of that vertex and line it up. Now again, I want it to open up this way so it'll eventually hit that side. So 35 degrees is here. And I just rotate around, set it back down so I can connect them. And I get that. So this was 35. And this should be 35. Let's double check. Again, pick your protractor up and spin it until it's lined up so that it's pointing at a zero. Okay, and yep, 35, cool. So I have 110, 35, 35, that one's done. Okay, the last one, 60, 70, 80. So let's start with a line, vertex, doesn't matter. I usually like to start with the bigger angles, but it's up to you. We might all do it a different way, 80. Label it. All your angles should always be labeled. Slide over. I don't have a ton of room, so I'm just going to put my vertex there. Let's do 70 now. If I do 70, that's way up here. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to erase this, so I'm not writing on top of it. I need to continue this one a little bit further because they didn't meet yet. This was 70, and now I'm gonna make sure that's 60. Well, when I put it on there, that is nowhere near 60, that is 30. So turns out, I'm gonna say not 60, turns out if I try to make a triangle out of these numbers, it doesn't work, okay? So you might have heard a rule about triangles or figured this out in class already, that triangles actually have to add up to 180 degrees. You'll notice 40, 50, 90 equals 180. 35, 35, 110 equals 180. These numbers did not equal 180. If they don't equal 180, there's no way you're actually going to be able to construct it and make a triangle. Either it's not going to meet or it's going to meet but not give you the numbers that you need. Okay, so now we're going to go back and look at these words here. Unique means only one answer, only one triangle. It's unique, has to be that triangle. Many means I could draw lots of different triangles that would work. And none means it's not possible. Well, we already know from here, this one didn't work. There's no triangle you can draw that will have 60, 70, and 80 degrees doesn't happen. Let's look at these two. If you compare my drawing to your drawing, you might have drawn yours a little bit bigger. Maybe yours is that size. Maybe yours is smaller and it's only that size. Okay. Turns out, as long as we have the 40 and the 50 and the 90, we could get many different triangles that work. They're just going to be different sizes. Same with this one. You might have the exact same angles as me, but yours might be a little smaller or a little bigger, okay? So again, many different triangles could work here. When you know what the angles are, you could get ones that are bigger or smaller and still correct, okay? We'll keep going in the next lesson.